Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we are looking at this 4 Mac 120 AM FM 120 channel CB radio. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment and all that lot. Join the Facebook group and have a look at my new website, microchips.net, where you will find all my wonderful boards and replacement VCOs. Go check it out. Anyway, so we have this 4 Mac 120 that was bought as non-working and like a challenge. Let's see if we can't get these things working again. So we've took it apart and there's a couple of wires flapping about in the breeze that I'm not sure about. We've got a switch fitted on the front, not sure what that's all about yet. And the switch seems to be fitted where the receive LED, um, receive light used to live. Nice 1969 in the output there. So we've got to try and decipher what's going wrong with this radio. See if we can't get it working. So on the printed circuit board side, everything looks everything looks good on that side. Nothing mutilated or anything. Just as you would expect from one of these boards. It's a 106 AOX board. So just doing a visual inspection, I notice this. We definitely have a cold solder joint on the channel change. That's not going to help matters. And that's definitely, um, it's definitely flapping about in the breeze. There's another one there as well. So yeah, those will have to be dealt with. That's not going to help matters. And to be honest, most of them look dry, so we'll resolder the whole lot. But apart from that, everything else looks okay. There's been no cut tracks around the PLL or anything, which is always a plus. So let's get these soldered up. So I'm just going to add a little dot of flux. And we'll get this soldered up. I do like adding a little bit of extra flux, just makes the job a little bit better. There we go. So at least we know that's not going to cause us a problem. But this is going to cause us a problem. The radio doesn't seem to be wired, Cybernet or Uniden. So we're going to have to work out the wiring. So the radio does switch on. But we only seem to be getting signal in the mid-band position. So we'll come to that in a little bit. So I think those are transmit. So that stripey wire must be negative. Brown wire must be transmit. So we are receiving, which is good. So at least it thinks it's doing something. And it thinks it's transmitting. We have audio. So I think we know which of the wires now. So we've got brown on the transmit, green for the audio, and the other one for the negative. As the receiver switch through the relays. But we're not getting any power output. 
We must be getting something because my frequency counter is responding to it. But we're getting absolutely nothing on the power meter. So it's definitely doing something, but just not a lot. So we've tidied up the microphone um, socket there. Wired it cybered it. Just got to try and work out what's going on with the rest of it. Now we've got no receive audio. So just having a look on the output of the audio amplifier I see. And everything there looks normal. And it's there on the back of the cell call. But you can see the cell call has got no wire on it. So we're going to borrow one off my other radio. So we've got audio in some places, but not in other places. And if we connect that green wire to the extension speaker socket, there's our audio. So that's working. So we just need to tidy that up. Just need to link out the cell call. And it's cutting off the audio correctly. When in transmit, so that's fine. So I've linked out the cell call. What we'll do is we'll tidy that up later. We'll keep the socket on the back so there's not a big gaping hole in the back. That's one more problem off the list. Now let's have a look at this transmit. So it thinks it's transmitting. And as you can see by the tiny SA, we have got a carrier and the frequency counter said that we had a carrier before, so I know something's working, just not a lot. So let's try and find out why our RF stage is not working. So I've just got the scope on the output of the um, pre-drive there. And it is doing something. But I don't think it's as big as it should be. So I don't think that's our problem. So let's check for some voltages. Well, we should have 13 volts on the collectors of the transistors. And we don't seem to have anything. It's not switched on transmit. So we're missing a supply to the transistors. So where does that come from? And then we have this diode. And sure enough, this is the diode that supplies the supply. And right next to it, there's a cut wire. And that cut wire kind of looks the same colour as this janky switch on the front so maybe this was a high and low power switch that somebody had fitted with a little light on the display which we're going to repurpose later so maybe this was high and low power but the wires have been cut so that's not going to work so we'll put the diode back into place And sure enough, we have a massive carrier. That's to be expected. And a healthy RF output. A really healthy RF output. But nothing on high and low band, just on mid band. So I wonder what's going on there. So, a little bit of adjustment, and it's really, really healthy. So, yeah, that's all good. 
It's all the high and low band crystals. Somebody's put the wrong crystals in, maybe just to make it look like it's complete. But these crystals aren't right. I've temporarily substituted it for a crystal that's in the right range and it it proved that we are working but unfortunately I have not got the correct crystals for this so we're gonna to have to go down another route for this so seeing we've got mid band working we can do something with that so looking at the front and this little LED that's actually quite nice I think we'll use that for UK 40 as an indication for UK 40 and use the additional switch for UK 40. So what we've got to do is remove this crystal board. So as you can see, the crystal board goes in where C17 is and on a schematic where there is no additional crystal board, C17 is a 47 picofarad. So I've done this before take the crystal board out we'll replace c17 with a 47 picofarad and that returns the radio just a stock mid band so that's fine that's working so how are we going to restore our missing bands we also need to get rid of 41 to 80 which is simple enough and there's our pll 1979 52nd week very nice so we're going to take our PLL chip out. I'm going to modify the band switch at the front with a couple of shock key diodes. And we're going to connect it to one of my modification boards. So this is my AM FM board, but I've reprogrammed it with high band, low band and UK 40. So the UK40 is actually going to be both wires connected. I'm going to, I'm going to fit a offset board, which is this. So this will drop our crystal for UK40 offset. It just goes in as such. That's easy enough. Then all we have to do is put it onto UK40 and adjust that um, variable capacitor. So let's do that now. So that's low band, there's mid band, there's high band, and there's UK40. Very nice. Everything nicely on frequency. So let's have a look at this bleep. I don't know what you can hear, but it's making a tone when you actually key up, and I'm sure that's not right. I certainly don't want it to stay like that. So I don't know why it does that, but we're going to get rid of it. So we need to try and reverse engineer the wiring for this bleep unit. Now somebody's fitted a bleep on and off by cutting into the capacitor for the delay. Maybe that's our problem, but we're going to get rid of that anyway. So first thing, let's get rid of all this cell call wiring. As we don't need that anymore. So what I'll do is I'll just trim all the wires and put the plug back in the back. Now we've started to get wires falling off, so we're going to have to find out what each one of these does. So I'm just going along trying to work out what wire does what. So there's some that we can work out, like red and black, and the transmit, which is the brown. And that white and black stripe one, that actually cuts the audio and shunts it into a resistor for when you're on um, transmit. So the bleep doesn't come through the speaker. That's why it has two relays. So there's our bleep board out. And there's one of my boards fitted. So 
So this is actually a NATO style beep. I think it looks quite nice in there. Nice and compact. So next thing, let's have a look at this popping squelch. This should be easy enough to fix. So we're going to fit a capacitor across this transistor. So collector to emitter, just to hold it a little bit when it switches off. There we go. Nice and um, smooth on the release and no pop anymore. So squelch still works as expected, but no nasty pop. So let's have a look at the receiver sensitivity. So we're on channel one low band. Got 1k tone going into it. Let's reduce the RF input. So the cyanide meter is not moving very much. We're going past our normal reading. So actually, this is actually really sensitive. Yeah, it's really, really, really sensitive, which is excellent. Let's just have a listen to it in. Yeah. This radio has got really, really good ears. So let's try the other end of the band. Try its highest channel, which is channel 40 UK. Sure enough, just as sensitive. Excellent. So no further alignment needed on the receiver side. That is absolutely beautiful. It's really sensitive, this. Normally you can't hear it on minus 132 dB. But yeah, we go past the 12 dB cyanide. And yeah, it's perfect. So, it receives well. It transmits well. It kind of looks okay with that switch on the front. So I think that's job done. So there we have our Formac 120. Looking good, working well. Nice repair. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that lot. Join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee. Have a look at my new website, microchips.net, where you can find all my boards and all my beeps and everything. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.